Hi, I'm Dumble Dan from SampleLibraryReview.com, and today we're going to be checking out Hyperion Strings Micro by Soundiron. Aptly titled the Perfect String Starter Pack, Soundiron has been working on this Hyperion String Library for a little while, and I've been eager to see what it is all about with the first of three installments they've released the micro this is their introductory uh, low cost however it is a contact player instrument which uh, means there's a big benefit that you can upgrade to the full va version of native instruments contact if you don't already have it the advantage of the cross grade pricing developer promises a full credit with purchase if you'd like to upgrade to the future Hyperion string elements or the complete Hyperion strings, both of which are promised to be coming soon. Hyperion strings micro downloads as about two and a half gigabytes. It's a string sample set recorded at Fantasy Studios in Berkeley, California. It contains five NKI instruments, ensembles, violins, violas, celli, and basses with multi-dynamic sustains, staccatos, spiccatos, and pizzicatos, as well as controls for real-time vibrato, temple sync crescendos, and day crescendos. The library comes with a sound stage for positioning, which is really cool. We'll get into that. And dozens of custom rooms, halls, chambers, and effects environments. There's also a play assistant and an arpeggiator, which we'll get into a little bit in the review today. Hyperion Strings Micro is a contact instrument, meaning it's compatible with both the full and free version of contact and loads up right into your libraries tab. And what makes this probably such a special instrument is all of this sells for just $49. At the time of putting this together, the library is available for a special $39 intro price. I'll be sure to include a link to take you over to Sample Library Reviews Hyperion Strings page. We'll have all the demos and any other review videos I found around the web. Now, since this is a uh, first look video, I'm just going to be sharing my experience as I check out the library. I do have to admit, this is actually a second look. I've gone ahead and prepared some examples of things that I wanted to make sure uh, would do the library justice and share them along with you. I've got the instrument here. As you can see, it's a contact player instrument. It loads right in your libraries tab. Here are the five NKIs, one for each section, and an ensemble. I have the micro cellos loaded up here. I'm just going to play through a little bit of uh, different articulations so you can hear what this sounds like right out of the box. Now, one thing I noticed right away is that uh, blend for vibrato here, uh, you're able to really change that. It's already hard baked into CC11. You could always reset that somewhere, I'm sure. And you could see your dynamic reactive right here. So this is our selector for... Our articulation and we've got legato turned off I'll turn it on again and I'll use both my expression which is the swell knob as well as my blend which is the vibrato <laughs> could see the way that the instrument's set up. You've got different dynamics. So we could just play with a sustain with a piano. And you 
you notice because I switched that, the Legato turned off. I didn't catch that at first. But the other thing I do like about this is the sound of that bow that kind of comes through when you're listening to the library um, with the pianissimo sustains. Mm -hmm. Moving along, we'll go over to our staccatos, and you'll see we've got a number of staccatos. The library comes with dynamic staccatos, as well as your dynamics, and then a dynamic patch, as well as your piano. That's a forte and forte with 32nd notes in mind. So that's the dynamics. Here is the forte with eighths. And with 30 seconds, spiccato. And if I wouldn't have got ahead of myself, that was the next uh, articulation. We would load it up here. We also have the ability to go into our different layers and change what loads in a different area for the edit page, it looks like. Then these crescendos, these are tempo synced from what we read in the documentation. And you see it, you can actually see the way it plays there. It looks like we've got different modes and sync, normal, and variable. So here's our sync. I'm at 128. And then variable, I guess we could change it. And we've got both crescendos and decrescendos. And here it's labeled long. I don't see a place to change it to shorts. One of the things that got me probably the most excited about this instrument is this um, space they've set up. You're able to utilize a number of different IRs as well as positioning. <laughs> And I actually am so surprised that the library doesn't load up with this concert seating preset setup because it just sounds really nice. It really adds quite a bit to the sample set. There's also um, some, uh, let's see, I think this clean and light is that one. Very upfront. It is a smaller a set of players, so you get a lot of immediacy in the sound. And then there's some more uh, unique IRs. And this is pretty typical of the sound design sound iron tends to do, um, from my experience. They tend to be able to create some pretty cool tones using the sample sets and the IRs. Thank you. 
So as we check out some of the other stuff, let's go ahead and jump to uh, the ensemble instrument. Um, the library does load pretty quick normally, but as you can see, I've got it on my uh, hard disk spinning disk, not my SSD. So it takes a little longer to load there. Of course, I recommend if you can put everything on your SSDs, I just need to juggle some space myself. So let's go ahead and play with some of the sustains with the ensemble. What's different about the ensemble instrument I saw is it gives you the ability to actually adjust both your panning as well as your uh, dynamic playback here with volume and the keys in which the instrument plays. So as you can see right now, the cello is only playing in this area, uh, the green, this green right here. Sorry, there's a couple of greens that... Looks like violas are right here, and cello is here. With uh, this particular library, it comes with the positioning all based on, it looks like um, you're able to control it here inside the ensemble patch. Um, actually, you could do both. So here's our, our violins. This is crazy because you got all, all of them here. There it is. I do have to say the difference between a green for cello and green, lightly blue-ish green, I should say. I um, would like to see a little more differentiation, but that's just me being nitpicky, obviously. This one's loading up with the cathedral close. And besides just the IR presets, you can see it gives you the ability to select your main IR and a secondary. Play assistant here, um, it looks like it gives you the ability to not play a wrong note. As you can see, I don't have any black keys that can play anything by merely selecting my key i'm adjusting sharps and flats to my white keys interesting i'm not sure how much i would use this but i could see how this might be advantageous for a younger um, composer who maybe is learning music theory 
or wants to quickly utilize one key or the next. As for the arpeggiator, in my opinion, we're going to need to switch to spiccato to really get the most out of this. And this has uh, the ability to change steps with your velocity here. You can change your speed. So we can go to eighth triplets. And then we all can do trills or runs. Let's see. So this I probably want to really crank it up. This looks like it could be kind of fun to get a little bit of playfulness with a run arpeggio. Uh, I'm not sure quite how much I would use it, although once you start to get in there and maybe play around with some of these wackier presets. Might be able to get something really fun. Let's see which one the moon dust. Here we go. Now see we've gone far beyond the scope of actual strings, just starting to dig in and have a first look of using the arpeggio effects quickly, just using one of their presets, as well as whacking out the IRs. The thing I really wanted to do, which is I prepared this, which uh, it's a, a little bit of a ostinato. I usually compare my libraries, those who are currently in my Epic Music Pro tutorial. Uh, we'll be familiar with this little piece of, of music. This is the way I test out strings just to get an idea of the character. Um, the first set I have loaded up here are the concert string settings for all four of Hyperion Micro libraries, violin, viola, cello, and bass. Oh, didn't mean to click that. So for the purpose of this, just going to play through and let you hear four uh, of the four of the libraries playing together with their concert hall settings, seating, concert hall seating set up with this nice little ostinato test. That's how uh, the concert seating sounds with utilizing our spiccatos, really short spiccatos inside the concert hall settings across all the instruments. It gives us a, a pretty nice, bold sound there. For the other version I wanted to load up, it's called Richly Thin Settings here. And this is uh, another one of the developer's presets. I thought it th sounded pretty good. I thought it'd be a nice contrast to hear with the same ostinato pattern. I think that starts to 
crack the surface of Hyperion strings. We'll have a full written review from one of our contributors in the next couple weeks to come once they've had a chance to really dig into all that this library has to offer. This video, I just wanted to share some of the sounds, some of the intuitiveness of the interface, which I've found very easy to jump around and uh, really give you a contrast of what the different um, sounds you can get out of the string library by utilizing they are IRs. Thanks so much for checking out the video. Uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please comment in the description below. Like, share, and subscribe. I'd love your support. And be sure to head over to samplelibrarywreview.com for the latest news, reviews, and our weekly deals page.